Have you ever had an old project you wanted to complete, but were waiting for the right tools? A few years ago, my wife gave me a radio control model airplane kit. It's a great kit, but I wasn't happy with the foam spinner that came with it. It was flimsy, not very scale, and was only designed for a two-bladed propeller. The real one had three. So it sat on my bench for a while. With a new 3D printing technology, I decided to dust off the kit and see if I could design one myself. SolidWorks 2017 has everything I need to get the job done, so let's get started. Using measurements from the kit and a scale outline that I found online, I used Sketch Picture to create the initial profile. After inserting the image, the scale tool allowed me to adjust the picture to the right size. The picture was then lined up with the origin. After adding some key measurements, spline tools allowed me to trace over the profile. Because the profile has no inflection, I used a simple two-point spline. Applying horizontal and vertical conditions to the spline handles, and with some quick adjustments, I had a perfect copy. SolidWorks 2017 showed me that I had a closed profile, so no worries when revolving the feature. A shell feature hollowed out the part. I used a 2 mm wall thickness well above the 0.7 mm thickness for my 3D printer. My part is in inches, but after typing the metric value into the property page, SolidWorks converts it for me automatically. I followed this up with a second revolve for the back plate. This one was thicker because I'll be shelling it out later. A cutout for the prop was made using references to the propeller. I patterned the cut, then made a copy of the front body so that I can use a combined feature to remove material from the back plate. I created a counterboard hole for the 3mm machine screw that will keep the spinner in place. This also simulates the hole in the spinner on the real airplane where a forward firing cannon was mounted. Hole wizard on a curved surface was no problem. Just select the front surface of the spinner and apply an along Z relationship to the origin. I then reordered it before the shell feature. Using convert entities to the inner hole, I then created a new hole on the back plate. I created a split line to separate the area where the back plate rests on the motor. A shell on the back plate removes unnecessary material. Adding some lightning holes, ribs, and fillets helped me complete the design. I found a two-bladed version of the propeller online through 3D Content Central, which I then modified for three blades by adjusting the circular pattern. I then created an assembly using a machine screw from SolidWorks Toolbox, the modified propeller, and the motor. Now that I've designed my spinner, I need to make sure it'll hold together on my plane. In my next video, I'll ask my friend Carl for some help testing this design using SolidWorks simulation. Thanks for watching.